It's been a while since I made a video about pseudoscientific medicine, so I figured I could make a quick video on it now. But before I get started, I would like to give a quick shout out to Thomas aka Professor Thick, for making me a new thumbnail template and a new outro, so make sure you stick around to the end to see the outro. What would you say to somebody that's recently been diagnosed with cancer? What, what questions should they ask their oncologist to figure out if they are going to receive adequate treatment or not? Okay, if someone got recently diagnosed with cancer, first of all, you want to know why. Why did you get cancer? Hmm, I don't know if that's the first thing I want to know. The first thing I'd want to know is how bad it is, how far it has spread, and what my chances of survival are. Asking the question why is a little useless. We can't always just pinpoint the exact situation that caused a tumor to form, and even if we can, it doesn't mean a lot. The fact is, you have a tumor. Why you have the tumor is not a useful question, especially since the answer will probably not be interesting in any way and won't help your treatment at all. Going rushing into doing chemo radiation surgery is not the way to go. Yeah, maybe it isn't a good idea to jump directly into those treatment methods. It depends on what your doctor tells you. If your doctor recommends it, then you should listen to him or her. But what you shouldn't do is doubt your doctor and seek out alternative treatment methods such as eating apricot seeds or drinking carrot juice. And they shouldn't get scared. It's just a wake-up call for them to change their lifestyle, change everything, and trying to have their body fight this. I see, I see. So that's why you said asking why you got the tumor is the first step people should do. You think that it's some sort of lifestyle that when improved can eliminate the tumors. Ah, <sighs> you know if cancer really is the result of poor lifestyle, how easy would it be for us? We could easily find proper methods to treat the cancer. We wouldn't need all these cancer research centers with scientists dedicating their entire lives to finding out the mysteries of one cancer type. It sounds so good, but you know what they say, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. If tumors could easily be eliminated by something as simple as proper diet and exercise, everyone would know about it by now. If it truly worked, the scientific community would be all over this. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Cancer is not an easy disease to find a cure for. Your body can handle any anything, as long as you don't hurt it. You have good sleep, you don't have stress, you make sure you drink water enough, and all the basic stuff. Unfortunately, even people who do everything right in terms of lifestyle can still get cancer. My guess on what you're saying is that if you take care of your body, your immune system would be able to eliminate any tumor cells. One thing about proponents of alternative or integrative medicine is their expectations on our immune system. Sure, our immune system is pretty awesome, but it alone can't prevent or cure cancer. That's just absolute nonsense talk, not to mention all the mechanisms that tumor cells have to evade immune detection. It's one of the hallmarks of cancer after all, meaning that it's literally one of the traits that define cancer. And um, they should, you know, want to do dif different kind of labs to see what kind of nutritional deficiency they have. I would love for you to just tell us what nutritional deficiencies would lead to cancer or a weakened immune system. It would also be nice if you went into specifics. Conspiracy theorists also seem to be extremely vague. Oh, just make sure you get enough nutrients. Oh, just make sure you eat organic. Come on, please. It would be nice if you people went into the biochemical mechanisms, because we actually understand a lot of the biochemistry behind tumors, and it doesn't look great for you guys. Now, I personally wouldn't call you a conspiracy theorist since you do have an MD after all, which I do think is quite a shame since you decided to go into integrative medicine what they do and boost their immune system before they do any surgery, any chemo, any other things. You know, at least you're not advocating for a replacement for modern treatment. Thank God you're not a naturopathic doctor or something. As long as people are receiving proper medical treatment, I don't care what they do on their own. As long as the alternative medicine they're taking doesn't interfere with the conventional treatment, even if there's no evidence that integrative medicine even helps or look at the integrative part of it. See your other options. No thanks, I'll stick to what has been proven to work. I mean, chemo is good for cancers like some fast, you know, like some testicular cancer, some leukemia, lymphomas. Some cancer, you do respond to chemo. But some like solid tumor cancers, like breast, lung, um, melanomas, those you don't respond. Okay, hold on, what are you talking about now? No response of breast cancer, lung cancer, and melanoma to chemotherapy? Please, let's go over some common drugs used for these cancers. Starting with breast cancer, chemotherapy is preferred in estrogen receptor negative tumors since we cannot use antagonists for that receptor. Drugs include cyclophosphamide which inhibits DNA replication, but at low doses can be an immunostimulant and an anti-angiogenic agent and works most effectively in combination with other drugs. 
Doxorubicin inhibits macromolecular biosynthesis by stabilizing a broken DNA complex right before replication, ultimately inhibiting rapidly dividing cells. Docetaxel binds to microtubules at high affinity and stabilizes it, which decreases free tubulin and thus prevents the extension of microtubules. Methotrexate inhibits dihydrophilate reductase in order to reduce tetrahydrophilase synthesis. Basically, the drug inhibits the production of folic acid, which is required for DNA and RNA synthesis. These are only a few of the drugs used in chemotherapy for breast cancer, and they are generally pretty effective. As you can tell, these drugs work to inhibit cell division, meaning that cancer cells will be the most affected. To say that these drugs have absolutely no effect on breast cancer is absurd. Studies show that chemotherapy significantly increases the survival rate of breast cancer patients. Now let's move on to lung cancer. Don't worry, I won't go into as much detail as breast cancer drugs. Carboplatin cross-links DNA strands. Gemcitabine creates an error in DNA. Paclitaxel stabilizes microtubules. Irinotecan sequesters DNA cleavage complexes. And now for melanomas, two common use drugs are temozolamine and decarbazine, which methylates guanine residues to induce apoptosis. Whew, that was a long list. Chemotherapy can greatly increase the chances of survival by quite a few percentage points, as indicated by multiple studies. There's no way that they have no effect on these three types of cancer. Of course, chemotherapy isn't the sole reason people get better from cancer. It's usually a combination of treatments that really put the icing on the cake. And patients say, oh, that's not true because there is patients who've been living for 20 years after doing chemo. Yeah, because circulating tumor cells in your body can live 30 years. Hmm, I wouldn't say circulating tumor cells can live 30 years. More like tumor cells in their respective tissues, either before or after metastasis, can live 30 years. But of course, 30 years is a long time, and the chances of that are extremely unlikely. Usually after like, I'm guessing 5 years after your doctor says the cancer has been eliminated, your cancer will most likely not come back. But of course, there are plenty of instances in which the cancer cell can remain dormant beyond 5 years before it springs up again. But 30 years? Hmm, extremely unlikely. That was a patient was diagnosed with melanoma 30 years before and then died with seizure because the CTC went end up going into his brain after 30 years. Mm. So we know circulating tumor cell stem cell can live forever. No, I don't think circulating tumor cells or CTCs can live that long. I mean, sure, if you think about it, why couldn't CTCs live forever? Look, your body is not as stupid as we might think it is. There are plenty of mechanisms put into place that would prevent tumor cells from surviving in the bloodstream. For example, firstly, the sheer force of these cells bumping into endothelial cells that surround the vessel can kill off the cells. Then we have the immune system, which targets and eliminates free-floating cells that don't belong there. And another very important mechanism is the apoptotic mechanism that come into place once cells are detached from the surface they're supposed to be on. Your body doesn't allow cells to live if they are separated from where they're supposed to be. For example, we have connected membrane proteins called E-cadherin, which is responsible for cell-cell connections. If a cell is free from the connection to another cell, apoptosis occurs. Another example is integrin, which attaches cells to an extracellular component, and if this connection is broken, apoptosis happens again. So overall, it's not very easy for cells to survive outside of their territory, free-floating in the circulatory system. If a cancer cell does survive for 30 years, then it would most likely be in their original spot or after metastasis to a new territory. The second thing I want to point out is how you kind of contradicted yourself. You said earlier that chemo doesn't work for melanomas, but now you're saying that the cancer cells remain in circulation after the treatment? So that means chemo worked to shrink or destroy the tumor? Your sentences don't seem to line up here. And it all depends on your immune system, how your body is handling it. Sure, your immune system plays a big role in eliminating tumor cells, but it's not just that. Tumor cells are tricky. They have all these nasty mechanisms put into place to not only avoid immune detection, e.g. the PD-1 complex, but also to recruit immune cells, specifically macrophages, and use them to nourish themselves, such as signaling them to release VEGF and other digestion proteins to aid in angiogenesis. All in all, it's not as simple as we think it is. The immune system is a tricky topic when it comes to cancer, which is why a huge hype in the cancer research community right now is focused on modifying the immune system. If you have perfect immune system, you take care of your body well, you keep the circulating tumor cell in control. And I mean, I tell people later stage, you could live with your cancer forever, like diabetes, like hypertension. You just have to keep the immune system good. Hmm, live with your cancer forever? You see, technically the disease is not called cancer until the tumor cells begin to invade other tissues. Yeah, I didn't know that for the longest time either. So if the tumor cells are invasive, can you live with it forever without eliminating it? I mean, sure, probably, but one thing's for sure, keeping your immune system quote-unquote healthy by natural means without help from conventional treatment is not the answer. Integrative medicine is a different story though. So then your message to somebody that may have been diagnosed with what the, the oncologist says is terminal cancer is yeah, don't, look, don't give up. Don't give up. 
Don't give up. That's the thing. You have to be willing to fight. It's all you. If you give up, if you pray and you say, oh, that's it, that's it. You have to first be very strong, decide that you're going to fight it, and you can do it. You could fight it. Okay, not a bad message to send at the end there, I suppose. Anyway, that's it for today's video, which means you get to see the new outro now. Bye.